They have three different stories. We've had it to the point where we've almost been chased off. But all say they've either seen. I've never, ever been so terrified in my life. Or heard what they believe to be Bigfoot. I heard crazy, crazy noises. Scott Lucas says those sounds are coming from behind his home in Deering. And now he won't walk back there without his shotgun. I heard a noise that was so hideous and loud and it was, it was not a cat, it was not a fish a cat, it was not a bobcat, it was loud and demonic and, and at the end it went. Scott says the creatures have scared hunters off his property. Two tree stands have been left behind. His son Michael remembers seeing how scared the hunters were and because he's seen Bigfoot himself, he understands why. There was no neck at all, absolutely no neck and they were huge furry, furry things and I mean, you could see the fur and the strides they took were amazing. It's just really weird because we don't know quite what to make of it. Both were contacted by Animal Planet's show series Finding Bigfoot. Scott and Michael showed up for a town hall meeting last year in the North Country to discuss their Bigfoot encounters and they weren't alone. 500 people in New Hampshire and these were all regular people that said, oh, yeah, sorry. Michael Eastman lives in Berlin and first saw Bigfoot back in 1973. It's the first time that I've not ever been able to breathe. I kept hyperventilating. I couldn't catch my breath. I just kept going. <laughs> From there, for me, it was never a question of, are they out there? I, now I knew that they were out there. For the past nine months, he's been studying their every move. Pretty much any range that I've ever been in, um, I've come across either signs of them or the actual beings themselves. I know that they're real. I mean, I've, I've got things that they've touched. He has no pictures of them, but has several photos of their markings in the woods. They'll twist the tree and then they apply pressure to it, pushing down on it, and it causes all these stress fractures. He has a hair sample and 17 hours of audio. He puts voice recorders inside these painted paper containers to camouflage them. He says Bigfoot talks in a click pop language. He's recorded them during the day and at night. We have audio of something. Okay, What that something is, we don't know, unless it's coupled with uh, you know, film and uh, actual physical evidence that doesn't really say much. Dr. Robert Goodby, an archaeologist and professor of anthropology at Franklin Pierce University, says many people are convinced they've seen Bigfoot. It's something he says is impossible to prove. The odds that there is this population of very large upright walking creatures that has escaped real scientific detection until this point, very unlikely. It could all be settled very easily. Find a body. But Eastman says that's not the answer. It's not necessary to, to have a, quote, body to prove that they exist. I think there's other means of doing that. And to those who say they don't believe, Michael says he's willing to take anyone out into the woods. And I'd be very comfortable doing that. And they would turn into one of those wide-eyed believers. Uh, there's no question in my mind. Kristen Carosa, WMUR News 9.